Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about what we can grow through autumn and winter on our balcony gardens, container gardens, or even indoors. So let's get straight into it. Autumn and winter is a time for me where sometimes my mental health can dip and I know that there are a lot of people out there who are the same and you know I think it's more to do with the fact that there's less sunlight and the days seem a lot shorter and if sometimes it feels like you accomplish less but just because you have a container garden it doesn't mean that you can't grow one of the things that I found really really useful last year is having my balcony garden and also having you know the start of my indoor jungle just to help keep me motivated and active throughout those darker days so if there's one thing that I want you to take away from this video is no matter how big your space is whether it, you've got a giant balcony or whether you've just got a windowsill you can still grow something and that will eventually help you with your mental health I urge you to just give something a go over winter just to help keep your spirits up anyway let's get on with the growing shall we <laughs> Yay, a new filming location. Not everyone who watches my channel has even got a balcony or outside space at all. So I'm gonna show you what you can grow indoors on your windowsill. But once again, I also recognize that if you're like me and you live in a brand new build apartment, you don't even have a windowsill. My indoor herb garden is on some cheapy shelf that I bought from uh, a local store. It, I think it cost me something like eight pounds. It doesn't have to be the most expensive thing, but you know, it's totally worth it. In fact, let me take you over to my indoor herb garden and you can have a look for yourself. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing special or glamorous about my herb garden. And it goes back to what I've mentioned a thousand times on this channel. I don't need everything to be picture perfect. My indoor herb garden doesn't need to be Instagram famous. Why? Because it's essentially food that I'm growing for myself. So who cares what other people think? With my herb garden, I've already got some things ready for autumn and winter. So let me show you a couple of them. This is just an old pasta sauce container. But, as you can see, I've got some cuttings for mint. Now I've taken these cuttings from my mint outside because essentially it was coming to the end of its life but plants like mint and basil for example they are not frost tolerant and will die over winter so now's the time where you want to go and get all your cuttings from all of your favourite plants and start to propagate them ready to go out next year. The next thing to grow indoors is coriander. Now. I don't know about you guys, but every time I buy coriander from the store, it dies within about two or three days. <laughs> and the reason is, is, is coriander is actually a cold weather crop, and nine times out of ten we try to put it outside or put it on a windowsill that's just essentially just too sunny. So autumn and winter is a perfect time to get sowing your coriander seeds. So again, I'm going to show you how to do all of that throughout the next week or so. If you saw my cut and come again video, I showed you how to regrow spring onions in water. This is one of my favorites. I love spring onions so much. So all that I do is buy spring onions from the supermarket, top off what I need, and then I just place it in water and it regrows. Now I've got to the point where I don't even buy spring onions anymore, and I'm not going to need to do so again for the rest of winter. All I'll do is keep chopping the leaves of the spring onions and coming back to them. So again, something super, super easy that you can do indoors and keep on the windowsill or on a shelf. Now here's something that I'm growing outdoors, but I'm also gonna be growing indoors. Here, I've got some peas. Now with these peas, I'm going to be planting these outdoors in the cloud garden and I think later on I'm going to take you out and I'll show you where I'm planning on having them. These are super simple to germinate and to grow, but I've also got some that I'm going to be growing indoors. Let me show you. Now I've just made myself a little pot, a little container like this, I've sewn a whole load in there and they're going to grow up and I'm going to grow them indoors. You're probably thinking, well why? That sounds a bit strange. but. One of the great things about peas is you can eat them straight like this as a pea shoot. It is super, super tasty. And so what you do is you grow them to around about this height 
snip them off and then you can add them to your you salad. Get really, really great pea tasting flavor onto your salad. And you know, let's be real here, not all of us are going to have the space to grow our own salad throughout winter. But you know what? If you have to go to your supermarket and buy yourself a bag of salad, but you get to top it off with, you know, some fresh pea shoots, you're still going to get that satisfaction that you've grown something that's contributed to your own diet. Next week, I'm going to show you how to grow everything, so don't worry. Now, in this ratchet container are some garlic cloves. And you're probably thinking, what are you doing with that? Well, once again, I've shown you already on my channel how to grow garlic in water. But what you can do is also grow garlic in compost just like this and have this on a shelf. Now, I have got absolutely no intention of this garlic growing fully. All that I want to do is harvest the leaves over winter. Once again, this is just something else that you can add to your salads. So like I said before, if you're having to buy bags of salads, you can add in now your fresh pea shoots and now some fresh garlic leaves in there. And that's really gonna impact the flavors of the salads that you're buying in. Something that I absolutely love growing are microgreens. This is a tray of sunflower microgreens. And you know, it's not picture perfect. It's not as full as what you might see in other videos. But quite simply, I don't care. <laughs> and the reason for that is, you know, all of this stuff that I'm growing, I'm growing for myself. So it doesn't need to be brimming because otherwise it would just go to waste. Right now, this is at the perfect length for me to start harvesting. And all I'll do is just chop some of these off. And once again, I'm gonna add this to my salad. So I get a nice fresh tasting salad. And, mm, it adds a really nice kind of nutty taste to your salads. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, you see a lot of stuff online about microgreens and how, you know, you have to have this expensive equipment to do it. And people just really overcomplicate it. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because I'm going to show you within the next few weeks how to grow your own tray of microgreens. And once again, this can just live on one of your shelves, snip some off and then add it to your salad. Now, as we go along with the rest of the video, there's going to be some crops that I'm going to be growing outside on the balcony garden, which I'm also going to be growing indoors too. So make sure that you continue watching the video just so that you don't miss out on something that you could be growing indoors too. Considering it's October, the cloud garden is still looking pretty green. In fact, I still have plenty of summer vegetables. So make sure you check out that video as well. I don't really think that you can have a autumn or winter garden without having some form of lettuce. I'm trialing a couple of different types of lettuce this year of me I've never ever had a good run with them so hopefully this year will be a little bit different. Great veg that I'm going to be growing through autumn and winter is mustard. I absolutely love it. So with mustard I've got dual purposes for growing the mustard. I'll be harvesting the leaves throughout autumn and winter but I'm also going to be waiting till I get the seeds and making my own sauce as well. If you see my vegetable garden tour, you would know that Malabar spinach is probably my favorite food that I'm growing on my cloud garden at the moment. But it's going to be coming to an end soon. And I think I'm gonna cheat the system a little bit. I'm gonna dig up one of these plants and I'm going to put them <laughs> inside and let it grow up the indoor herb garden. But autumn and winter is a really great time to start your spinach seeds. I'm gonna be growing these in my window box containers because they can take a frost. It's really, really important to know the microclimate of your balcony garden. My garden doesn't get very much sun after two or 3 p.m. So what I'm gonna do with this spinach is I'm gonna leave it inside to grow as big as I can possibly get it before transplanting it outside, just to give it that extra kick. Because last year, what had happened was <laughs> I planted it out November, but I wasn't able to properly harvest until February, March next year. And that's because I planted it at the right time according to most gardeners, but that advice doesn't apply to my garden. So now that I know that, I'm starting everything a bit earlier this year. I'm leaving it to grow a bit bigger before I put it outside so that I am able to harvest throughout winter. This autumn and winter, what I'm gonna try doing is growing my peas along the arches. I mentioned I didn't have much luck growing along the arches, so I'm hoping this season to see a bit of improvement now that I've got a bit of experience. Then we move on to the brassicas. Now, 
I haven't sown any just yet, but what I will be sowing is broccoli, kale, cauliflower, and cabbage. They all belong to the same family. You tend to associate these big plants with allotments and having massive gardens. Well, I've proven that you can do them on a balcony garden. So I'm gonna show you how to do that step by step. What I will say, everything that I've mentioned so far is something that you can grow indoors as well as outside, including those brassicas. In the same way that we're gonna grow our peas and harvest them early, we'll be doing the same thing with our brassicas. As you saw on my garden tour, I've been growing these for a while, but at a young age, these plants are super nutritious and are perfect to add to salads as well, which makes them perfect to grow on our indoor gardens. I'm sure we've all had this happen before in our cupboards. Here's a crusty old potato that I've got from the supermarket. It's got this little growth on it, but actually, you know what? I'm not mad at it because I'm gonna plant that as well. So if you wanna see how to grow your own potatoes from a mess like this in your cupboard, make sure that you're subscribed because I'm gonna show you how to grow your own potatoes. One of the plants that I'm gonna be growing this autumn are beans. These beans are French climbing beans. They do not like frost, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to experiment with them and I'm going to see whether or not they can grow through my autumn and winter here on the cloud garden, simply because I don't tend to get frost up here. This is just an experimental crop. I'm intrigued to see what they can and cannot do. However, I've also started some broad beans, which should fare a little bit better as well. I've also mentioned peas. But I'm also going to be growing some sweet peas. I'm going to have them grow along the arches so I get a bit of colour as well throughout winter. Now, in my raised bed down here, what I'm going to be growing is some beetroot and also I'm going to be growing some carrots as well. I'll also be adding some Swiss chard into the mix as it just did so well last year. And some radishes as well. I'll also show you how to make your very own raised beds. Now we've covered a lot in today's video and I'm not suggesting that you do absolutely everything but I just wanted to give you an idea of some of the things that you could do with your small space. That doesn't necessarily mean that you do absolutely everything on the list, but no, just pick one or two and give it a also, go. If you do choose to grow some of this stuff, I would love, love, love to see it. I'll leave a link below to my Facebook group because me and the group, we love seeing everybody else's work. Or if you don't use Facebook, tag me on Instagram. I hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Bye.